In the last video, we set up this video class and this playlist class, and the playlist has a relationship to the video class in that each playlist stores several videos, thus we're using a list of videos there, and then we added the video to our database, but we didn't add our playlist to our database, but either way, we looked at what the Entity Framework did with our, da our database. We have title and description from video, the same as what we have in our code here. Each video has a title and a description. We also have an ID, which makes sense. We have ID, title, description. But now the video has this playlist ID column, which is not in our original video schema. The playlist table has an ID and a title, and if we look at the playlist table, there's an ID, there's a title, but there's nothing that represents a list of videos inside of the playlist table down here. This list of videos, uh, hopefully that doesn't cause you problems with me alt tabbing. <laughs> Sorry, maybe I should do them side by side. Anyway, uh, this list of videos is managed, or the Entity Framework manages that via this playlist ID. If you understand foreign key relationships and one to many relationships, then uh, this will make sense to you. If not, you can go look at my SQL programming playlist that, or we'll just cover it briefly here. Uh, as you can see, a playlist has a list of videos. That means I can have several videos inside of my playlist. In this particular scenario, I'm adding one video uh, to the playlist down here that I actually commented out. Let me bring that back in, control KU. You see here we instantiate a playlist, we set the title, we actually add the video to the playlist and then down here I'm actually going to say db.savechanges and I'm gonna I'm gonna run this. Now you think about what's gonna happen, what's what, what's gonna change inside of the, the actual database or that or wrestle with it on your own. It'd be much more effective for you to try this on your own before watching me do it. Anyway, pause the video, think about it. Control F five, build that, run that. Our program thinks for a while, communicates with the database. And our program actually crashes here. The reason why it crashes if we scroll up is saying, hey, I'm trying to drop the database, my test DB. This is SQL Server yelling back at us via the entity framework. It's saying, uh, you told me to drop the database. We said delete right here, uh, but it's currently in use. Why would it be in use? I'll tell you why it's in use, because we're using it here inside of SQL Server Management Studio. This connects to SQL Server as well and says, hey, I'm using this database. And so the SQL Server, when we tell SQL Server to delete the database, it's like, hey, uh, that's kind of rude. Somebody's connected to the database and you're trying to delete it. So one way around this, it doesn't always work, but generally sometimes works. I'll say use master down here. It uses a SQL instruction that says, hey, swap to the master database. Master is the database. It's a system database, one of the default databases that comes installed with uh, SQL Server, and SQL Server uses it to manage all your databases, go figure. Anyway, if I switch to master, watch, I'll hit a 5 on this. You can see that this drop down changed from my test DB to master. And in theory, we're no longer connected to the database. We don't have that connection anymore. So let me control F5 this. Let's hope it works. And it worked good. Press any key to continue. Now I'm going to go back to our database here at the top of our little SQL script here. I'm going to say use my test DB. And I'm going to hit a 5. And I want you to think, is the schema going to change at all? And or will I have data in here? According to this code that we wrote here, we eventually said save changes. Will any of the data or the schema change? Pause the video, think about it. F5. And here's here's our, our video. Okay, hello world entity framework. Learn the entity framework. Let's go back over here. That's exactly what we have here for my video. But the playlist, our actually playlist, does not show up down here. And that's simple. It's because we didn't add the playlist to our context. Remember, the, these are our pipelines to the database. And if we don't add our objects to these, these DB sets, then even though we're instantiating them and we're connecting them out here in object land, they have nothing to do with SQL land. So I actually have to come down here and say db.playlist.add. The playlist. Now earlier we saw a null reference exception with the list, and we don't instantiate our DB set right here, so you'd think this would cause a null reference exception. Can you figure out why? We'll come back to that. Anyway, I'm going to run this. Control F5, and it executes. Press any key to continue. Let's go back to SQL Server. 
F5, and now here's our playlist. And did you notice before the playlist ID on the video was null? And now the playlist ID is 1, because 1 is a subset of the IDs listed in the playlist table. That's very critical. That's what foreign key relationships are about. If you're going to have an ID value here indicating that this video is a member of a playlist, that playlist better exist. It's like saying, oh, maybe in genealogical work, if you say that somebody has a father, that father better exist, or at least you hope they do. Anyway, SQL Server will, will enforce that for us. In fact, we can actually show that insert into videos values. I'm going to just do my own little insertion via SQL here. Uh, we don't have to insert anything for the ID column because that's auto-generated. The title, I'll just say me title. And for the description, whatever. Yeah, that's right, whatever. <laughs> That'll be our description. And then for playlist ID, I'll just say it's playlist ID 5. And when I hit a 5 on on all the script, it's saying, hey, you, you're trying to do an insert here, and that conflicted with the foreign key constraint. Okay, the foreign key constraint. Let me comment this out and bring this all back. Say, hey, you're trying to insert a 5 here, but there's a foreign key constraint that says if you put a value here, such as 5, that 5 better exist over here. There better be a playlist uh, with an ID of 5 if you're trying to insert into that playlist. Let me actually go to our videos table, right click, and go to, to design. This allows us to change the schema of our videos table if we want to by hand in SQL Server. I'm going to right click out here in the open area and say relationships. And there's an automatic relationship created by the entity framework. Foreign key underscore DBO, videos underscore DBO, playlist playlist ID. I think this will become more clear as we look in here. We're going to say, hey, foreign key base table. The videos table, its playlist underscore ID column is a subset of the playlist table ID. Meaning, if we try to insert a value here, that value better exists in the playlist table, the ID column, which, which hopefully makes sense. Now I have this double arrow, so maybe we'll do it that way. The videos playlist ID is a subset of playlist ID. That playlist better exist if you're trying to insert a video in that playlist. So this relationship here was created by the Entity Framework when it created the actual database. And I showed you profiling and how the Entity Framework uh, creates our database, creates our tables for us, and that sort of thing. Now I could say, I could say insert me title whatever uh, one in into that, that table. Let's uh, actually change it to my test DB. I'll, highlight this. When I highlight this and I hit a 5 it only runs what's highlighted. And now if I do the selects, I'll just run these by themselves. You can see here's me title, the descriptions, whatever. The playlist ID is 1, which is a subset of the IDs of playlists in our database. You can also see the ID here for that video is 3 because when we tried to insert for 2 that insert failed, but the auto-generated ID for that record was lost. Now if I go back to uh, my program and actually tried to pull this record. It would pull just like a natural object. In fact, why don't we? Let's do it. I'm gonna go here db and I'll say db dot videos dot select. That's a query uh, link construction. Go look at my link videos if you want. But I'm just gonna take each video and I want to look at the video title and I'll change that to a list because I know list has a for each function that I can pass console.writeline2 as a delegate and that'll essentially print all the name, the titles of all the videos in my database. And I'll just drop a return here so we don't execute any of these other instructions down there. Control F5 and if you look at the console window you see hello world entity framework. That's the one we inserted as an object before but then here's the one we actually inserted directly into SQL over here. Anyway, now I want to point out, most critical though, is that the playlist has the list of videos inside of it, but the playlist table doesn't store any kind of videos or videos list or anything. This is how we establish a one-to-many relationship. We, we have one playlist and can have several videos. So instead of modifying the playlist table in relational databases, we just say, hey, each video is going to keep track of what playlist it is in. And so you can see in this case we have one playlist and there's many videos inside of it and so that's where our list of videos that's how our list of videos gets populated as it says well for this playlist pull all the videos that have that playlist ID I can actually
come back here and prove this. Let me uh, get rid of this. I'm going to say db.playlist.single. I know there's only one playlist inside of my database. Otherwise, this would, single would explode when I do that. I'm going to call it playlist. The list gets db.playlist.single. Now I can say, hey, for each video vid in the list, console write line vid dot title. And since both of these videos are in the one playlist, we'll still we'll see the videos again. Uh, but I have to dot here the list dot videos. Control F5, and you can see unhandle looks. <laughs> So I obviously wasn't expecting that behavior I got in the last video. I forgot to add this dot .include, which gets into eager and lazy loading. Essentially, when you load a playlist, for example, in this case, we have a playlist that has a list of videos. I might just be only interested in the title of the playlist, or maybe the ID, or some other property that we could have in this playlist, but we don't currently. And so it would be a waste of time and resources to load the videos every time I load all the playlists especially if I had a lot of playlists and a lot of videos and all those playlists that would get very expensive especially if all I'm trying to look at is the title of each playlist so that gets into eager and lazy loading we'll talk about that in different videos but I had to throw this include in here I said hey DB give me the playlist but when you go fetch all the playlists from the databases also fetch each playlist videos because right here I want to say hey for each video in the list videos, print out the video title. We'll get into eager and lazy loading uh, later in a different and later videos. Let's focus on what we're doing here with the many-to-many -many relationships, and I mean the one-to-many relationships. Here we have a playlist, and we're pulling "Hello World" in the framework from the database, and we're also pulling the record that we inserted into the database as well.